In this Baldur's Gate 3 video, I'm going to be covering the UI of the game, and not only that, but how to set up your skill bar and how to set up your reactions properly. A lot of people probably trial and error at this point their way through the game, and they know a little bit about how the UI works, but not all of it. This video is aimed at new players as well as players that have already played a bit of the game and understand some of this stuff, but not all of it. So if you want to learn a couple things, stick around for more. The first thing I'm going to talk about is grouping your party. You can either click the button on the left-hand side of the screen to group your entire party into moving together in the same group, or you can press the G button to do this, and you can cycle through your group by pressing F1, F2, F3, and F4 if you have four party members. If you have less than this, obviously, it'll just be F1 up to the number of party members. And that way you can get to the character that you want quickly. Ungrouping party members allows you to move them individually, like in the case of wanting to move your rogue around so that he can sneak through traps and, you know, disarm things before the rest of your party moves through it. And then grouping them allows you to move them all together at once, you know, as you move around the landscape so that you're not, like, having to move them all independently. You can also rearrange the order of your party members by grabbing them with your mouse and moving them up and down on the order on the left-hand side of the screen. And you can also drag a character independently. Let's say you don't want to separate everyone, but you want to separate one character. You can do this as well. You can also make your entire party hide at the same time, which is great for setting up ambushes by pressing Shift-C or clicking the button on the left-hand side of the screen below the portraits. Keep in mind that if you're hiding in bright light with your party or an individual character, you won't even have the opportunity to make a stealth check. If you should be seen, you'll just be spotted instantly. So make sure that you're hiding in dimly lit areas. Hiding in a dimly lit area and being in the view of an enemy will make you do a stealth check to see if you remain hidden or they detect you. So obviously the higher your stealth skill, the more likely it is that you're going to remain hidden should you move into their line of sight. And you can see what enemies' line of sights are while you're hiding, but you can also see them by pressing the shift key while you're not hiding to give you a general idea of where they're looking before you even try and sneak. And one suggestion here is that you can use the turn-based mode button on the bottom right next to the skill bar that will basically freeze time and allow you to set up ambushes or more precisely sneak. This is because it will allow you to maneuver and position each character in your party simultaneously without the enemy moving at the same time, so if you want to get like a more precise ambush and put your targets all next to separate targets at the same time and then all do their attacks in a row before the enemy has a chance to respond, you might do that. Or maybe you're sneaking through a really tough area where there's a lot of patrolling and guards going on and you need to be able to move more precisely in between their movements so that you don't get caught. So make sure you're using that turn-based mode as much as you can. Set up ambushes. Ambushes are a great way, particularly on balanced or higher difficulty to give you an upper edge in combat and really take some fights that can be very difficult for new players and make them a lot easier. Inside the inventory screen, you can see a lot about your character, including their current conditions that they have, if any, their resistances to different damage types, their notable features, which are essentially like their passive features that are always active on their character. And here you will also see the armor class of each character, what bonuses they gain to their attack rolls, and how much damage you can expect from each weapon they have equipped. Having access to this information is really important because you can use this to determine like if I equip this armor and I look at the armor class and it goes down, maybe that's not a better armor for the character that I'm using. Or maybe I remove an armor piece and now suddenly the character's armor class improves. Why did that happen? These are things you can look at. You can also look at the attack rolls and see like why am I having a higher attack with this weapon than a different weapon. You sort of go through that and, you know, dissect it a bit so that you have more information about where your damage is coming from and how you're connecting with your attacks better with one weapon or another. The skills tab will show you the bonuses or penalties to each type of skill check that you'll be doing with that character, along with your proficiencies, which have the little gray hexagon die next to it. So you can see which ones you're proficient with there and you know which ones you have success with more often than not and which ones you should probably avoid on that character. And the last tab in the inventory screen will give you general information about the character, including its initiative bonus, this is going to improve the chances of it going first every combat, which is good. Higher initiative bonus, the better. It's going to show you the movement speed or about how far the character can move in combat. Higher is better. Dark vision range, whether your target can see in the dark or not. Again, higher is better. It will also show you your proficiency bonus that's added to anything you're proficient with. This will increase from plus 2 to plus 3 at level 5 and then to plus 4 at level 9. And it will also show you the weapons and armor that that particular character is proficient with. That's great to know so that you don't use something that they're not proficient with. As well as what the saving throws of that character are so you can see what their strengths and weaknesses are against certain effects. And then below that you'll see the tags that affect the character. And these often affect dialogue choices. For instance, if you have a class tag, like for the class that you are or subclass that you are, there might be specific dialogues that are pertinent to that class or that subclass that'll trigger those dialogue options if you have those tags, and if you don't, those options will not be present to you. 
And then at the bottom of the screen, you'll see your actions and bonus actions bar. And next to it, you can see which weapons you have equipped. You can swap back and forth between melee and ranged, which is important if you plan to try and do an attack of opportunity, since you won't be able to do an attack of opportunity if you end your turn with your ranged weapon out. So make sure if you're like a melee character who swapped to a ranged weapon to attack because you couldn't get into range, that you then swap back to your melee weapon in case an enemy runs by you and you can get an attack of opportunity. Here you'll also be able to choose how your dual wield attacks are handled. If you have the one sword icon, then you're going to use their main hand to attack, and then you'll have to manually use your off hand to attack separately with your bonus action. Or you can set it up, if you have two swords here, to use both in the same attack. I personally like to leave it on one sword. That way, if I kill the enemy with my main hand, then I didn't waste my off hand attack hitting nothing. So that's kind of up to you, but I strongly suggest leaving it on one sword. Sometimes you want to attack an enemy with your you know, main hand and use your bonus action for something else besides using your off hand anyway, so it's not a bad strategy. And right next to this, you'll be able to toggle your torch off and on if you have one equipped. This allows you to toggle it on in like dark places, for instance, where you want to see better and then toggle it off. If you had like a shield in your offhand or something, it'll put it away and put your torch in it. And then if you toggle it, it'll put your shield back. Or if you had nothing there, then, you know, it'll put a torch in your hand and then put nothing back. So moving along to the skill bar or the bonus actions and actions bar on the bottom of the screen, you can see here like what you have equipped. And one of the things I would recommend to do to you almost immediately in this game is click the plus icon a couple times on the bottom right side of this bar. This is going to increase the amount of spaces you can see on this bar. It's very likely that if you have not done this, that you are actually missing, you know, class features and actions that you can take during your turn that are hidden because you didn't expand your bar high enough. So that should be the very, very first thing you do. And on the left hand side of this bar, you'll generally see general actions. And these are actions that are available like shoving, jumping, disengaging, uh, hiding, things like that. And also your regular attacks and any weapon actions you're gaining from your weapons. Keep in mind that these weapon actions will change each time you change the weapon because not all weapons have the same weapon actions. So you might see something, you might get it all organized and it might look perfect to you. And then you change your weapon and you're looking at it like, why is it all of a sudden disorganized? Because you have new weapon actions that you need to reorganize. And you can reorganize all of this by clicking the lock icon just above the plus icon on the right hand side, which will unlock your bar and you can drag these around. And if you press K, you can actually look at like the spells that you have, the actions that you have. And you can drag things accordingly where you want them uh, in order to have it set up how you want. And then on the right side of your bar, you'll typically have the things that are pertinent to your class and subclass. And you can organize these however you want. I typically, like on my Paladin, for instance, I put all my Channel Divinities at the top with my like healing spells and stuff like that. My Lay On Hands up there. And then I have my Smite spells and Smite Attack, Divine Smite, organized under that. Then I have like my buffing spells, like Bless and things like that, organized below that. Buffing class features. And then below that, I have like any offensive spells or other spells. But you can organize it however you want, and then you can lock this afterwards so it doesn't change. And you can do the same thing with your consumables. If you open your inventory and have the bar unlocked, you can drag the consumables that you want there on the right hand side so that you have the consumables that you want available. So you can see how many health potions you have or how many revive scrolls you have, or maybe you have some other scrolls you want to remember that you have that you don't always remember. You can put them there so that you know they're available during combat. And above your action bar, you're going to see your action icon, your bonus actions. You're going to see any other special features of your class. In this case, for Paladin, I have how many Lay On Hands charges I have and my Channel Divinity charge. And then you're going to see your spell slots, the number of, you know, level of each spell slot. So like if you have four level one or five level one spell slots, and then I have a little icon showing that I can also use cantrips. So you're going to have these are going to be different depending on the class that you are, the subclass that you are might have superiority die here if you're like a battle master or something like that. Or if you're a monk, you'll have your key listed here. So these will change. But this kind of shows you like the amount of resources you have left for your turn in the bonus action and action department. But then the amount of resources you also have left in terms of spells and other class features just generally. And some of these things will replenish when you short rest. So keep an eye on what does for your class. And some of these things will only replenish on long rest. So again, pay attention to what's replenishing when you short rest and what's replenishing when you long rest for your class. And then lastly, above your skill bar, your actions and bonus actions bar on the top right of the bar, you'll notice these little icons and these are your reactions and how you have them set up. What reactions you have is dependent on what class you are, what class features you have, what subclass you are, what feats you've taken with your character, and how you have these set up is gonna be you know, shown here on the bar. And you can dictate to the game exactly how you want your reactions to go. And you can do this by hitting K and going to the reactions tab. 
and either ticking them on or ticking them to ask. And we'll go through like what that means and why you might do that. But before we get into that, I want to make sure that you understand that there are actually two different types of reactions in Baldur's Gate 3, but they're both called reactions, so it's really confusing. The first is ones that use a little pink icon that says reaction, and these can only be used once to turn collectively. That means if you have a list of reactions that have the little pink icon, you're only going to be able to do one of those things every turn, so you must decide which one of those you want to do if you can do one. But something that you may not know is you can actually get a reaction on your turn. So if you use something like Tenacity to deal damage with your reaction when you miss the target. And then you can also do a reaction on the enemy's turn if it's applicable. So let's take that example where I use Tenacity on my turn to deal some damage. Then the enemy's turn goes. They hit me with a melee attack. So I use Shield Blow as a reaction, knock them prone. And now I've used my reaction for the enemy's turn. However, if the enemy had moved away from me on their turn and I did an attack of opportunity with my reaction. And let's say I missed. Well, then I couldn't use Tenacity to actually add some damage, even though I missed with another reaction, because I've already done a reaction that turn. However, when it's my turn again and I attack the enemy, if I miss again, I can use Tenacity. Or if I try and move away from the enemy and he attacks me with an attack of opportunity, I could use Shield Blow instead. And the other type of reaction is a reaction that you can use as many times as you want, as long as you always meet the criteria for it. For instance, with a Paladin, you can use Divine Smite anytime you do a melee attack. This means on the attacks you do on your turn, on the weapon actions you do on your turn, on attacks of opportunity, on the turn that's not your turn. You can use this whenever and wherever as long as you have the spell slots for it and you make a melee attack. Or the reaction of the Lucky Feet, for instance, when you're about to get hit or you're about to miss an attack, you can use this on every opportunity that this will happen regardless if you've used any other reaction on the turn, etc. And what I strongly recommend for new players is that they go into their reactions, they tick everything on on the left side, and then they tick everything ask on the right side. And the reason for this is that's going to make the game prompt you every single possibility that you could take a reaction, one that costs a resource, or a reaction for any one that does not cost a resource. And you're going to learn your character what causes these things over time, because the game's going to keep prompting with them until you learn. And what you'll find will eventually happen is that you'll figure out, okay, I don't need to be prompt to ask for this reaction because I want to do it every single time. Then you can go back to your reaction bar and tick off ask on those ones. So that those just happen automatically. You don't need to be asked about them every single time. It's just annoying. You know you're going to do them. But then you can sort of, you know, filter it down to the ones you want to be asked for. That way you still have the opportunity to do ones where you want to make a decision. And the other ones just happen automatically for you behind the scenes. And to give you an example of something you might set up like this, the rogue has sneak attack. You can use your regular attack. And if you have sneak attack damage set to be automatic without asking, anytime you attack an enemy, if your sneak attack damage can be applied, it will be. And you don't need to be asked about this because you want it to apply every time it can apply. If the enemy dies and you don't need the sneak attack damage, then it's irrelevant. But if the enemy is still alive, you want to apply the sneak attack damage every time that you can, you will. So you don't need to be asked on sneak attack and you'd be better off ticking on your sneak attack for every scenario, but not ticking ask because you just want the damage to apply every single chance that it can. However, on Paladin, if you have Divine Smite ticked on, but you don't have Ask ticked on, every single time you do an attack or you do a weapon action, you're going to use Divine Smite whether you want to or not. And maybe you don't want to use it all the time. Maybe it's overkill for what you're trying to do and you just don't need the extra damage. Or maybe you want to pick and choose where you're doing it. Maybe you have a plan set up and you know, you're going to weaken this guy, then your rogue's going to finish him off next turn. Then you popped a Divine Smite and you burnt a spell slot you didn't want to. So in the case of Divine Smite, you'd actually be better off putting it to Ask so that you can decide, do you want to use Divine Smite on this action? Or what tier of Divine Smite do you want to use? Do you want to use a Spell Slot 2 or a Spell Slot 1? How much damage do I need to finish this guy off? So in that sense, it's better to be asked. And there are so many possible different scenarios of things that you'll have with your character based on your equipment, your features, your class, your feats. All of these things are going to factor into your reactions. And I, what I suggest doing again it's just taking them all on and putting them all on to ask and then kind of filtering them down and fine tuning it as you play the game. So that wraps up our UI skill bar and reactions guide. I hope you guys found that helpful. I know a lot of this guide focused on reactions, but reactions is a huge part of this game. And when you're set up properly, you can get way more out of your character than if they aren't. And I thought it was really important to make a video about it. If there are any other tips I forgot to mention, please leave them in the comments below to help out other new players. And if you have questions, let me know in the comments below. 